I mean, there's so many different types of seeds here. So you got to get your mind up and out of that. Oh, that's a net. Lord, have mercy. <laughs> I bind distractions in the name of Jesus. <laughs> This blueprint, the purpose of it is to give you an outline of what we're discussing over all of these weeks. We're, we're breaking down everything that happens from the time you get saved, because as you can see there, the regeneration part, from the moment you get saved and get regenerated until you actually go on to be with the Lord. Tonight, we're going to dive onto the theory side of the house, as you can see here. And we're going to be talking about number one on the theory, where, where we're discussing seed time and harvest time. Seed time and harvest time. And as we continue to move through all of these various subjects and topics, we want everyone to see that all of these elements are key in trying to understand who and what God is in our lives. Amen? Amen. So as you, as you can see, we're breaking it down bit by bit and piece by piece. But tonight, for your listening pleasure and personal enjoyment, we're going to start dealing with some of the theory of seed time and harvest time. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. So we're going to have three questions tonight that we want to deal with. The first question, of course, for this Blueprint to a Blessed Life, Part 7, is simply this. How does a seed progress from its origin to manifested reality? Number two, where do seeds operate? And number three, what makes seed sowing so powerful? So as we dive in tonight, I'm praying that if you have something that you want to share, you won't be bashful with it tonight. Amen? Amen. Go ahead and and, and, and put your questions in there or put your comments in there. Let us know that you're getting it. Or if you have a question, it, it's, it's awesome if we get an opportunity to, you know, answer your questions. Amen. So let's dive in with question number one. How does a seed progress from its origin to manifested reality? Um, you want me to start? You can start, yeah. Um, I just first think that you gotta, when you think about seeds, I think the first thing that comes to your mind, right, is a garden, right? Mm -hmm. And a lot of times we think about, you know, what type of uh, vegetable or fruit would we like to plant? And we have to make sure that the garden is ready for the seed, right? And so yeah. a lot of times now that we're talking about the seed, and uh, just so you know that the book of Luke, the eighth chapter, um, starting at the fourth verse uh, down to the 15th, and it could be more, but God talks about the seed and the soul, the seed sower. And so basically uh, a seed uh, progress from its original, way. how does a seed progress from its origin to a manifested reality? And so if you have a seed, what do you do with it? You, you, you plant it in the dirt, right? Yeah. And you cover it. And you hope that if you continue to water and let them get the right sunshine, that eventually something beautiful will grow up, whether it was some, what, cucumbers, tomatoes, or a pretty Tomato. flower, or whatever. And, and that's kind of how it is for our lives. And when we're planting a seed, you know, we, we want to make sure that we are we are the garden, and we have seeds in us, and we got to make sure that we take care of our heart. We got to make sure we take care of our mind. So that way that we're producing good seed, that we're producing the things that God wants us to produce, you know. And so that's way important. And I, I, I hopefully I'll be able to read this parable, but I'm, I, I don't want to step over. Our, our, OK, so when I think about the seed, I thought about uh, the book of Luke in the eighth chapter. And I'm just going to read a little bit. It just says a sower went out to sow his seed. And as he sowed, some fell by the wayside. And it was trodden down, and the fowls of the air devoured it, meaning the birds came and, and ate it. <laughs> yeah. And then some fell upon a rock, and as soon as it was sprung up, it withered away because it lacked moisture. So you wasn't attended to your seed. And then and some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprang up with it and choked it. And others fell on good ground and sprang up and bare fruit, fruit a hundredfold. He that has ears to hear, let him hear. 
And then over on the 11th verse, it says, now the parable is this, the seed is the word of God. And so Jesus was telling them that the word of God, the people heard it, but some fell by the wayside because they didn't embrace the word, right? Yes, right. Some fell up on a rock, but they, they forgot to keep praying. They forgot to keep attending church. They forgot to keep being obedient. So it lacked moisturizer <laughs> it lacked have you ever had your hair all dried out if you don't keep your hair up guess what it'll dry out right Man. and so you have to have some type of moisturizer you have to keep yourself up and so because uh it lacked moisture it withered away and then he says some fell among thorns and it sprang up and choked them and when i think about that i think about being in wrong crowds you know doing the wrong things and before you know it it's choked you but you've had the chance because the seeds were there. They were yeah. planted in you. And for whatever reason, you chose not to garden. You chose not to uh, guard your garden. Praise the Lord. Yeah. And so Jesus says now the parable is this because the disciples didn't understand the parable. He said, well, the seed, number one, is the word of God. And he said, and those by the wayside are they that hear. Then cometh the devil. Uh-huh. We're in the 12th verse now, the 8th chapter of Luke. And taketh away the word out of their hearts. How did the devil come and take the word out of their hearts? But because you didn't stop doing those things which he delivered you from. It was just that Sunday you felt good at church. Right. And so you praised God. But then after you left church, you went back to doing the same old thing. And that's how the devil steals the word out of your heart. Lest they should believe and be saved. So somewhere you didn't believe. And so Jesus said, had you believed that I was a deliverer, had you believed that I set you free that Sunday, you would be saved. But you let the devil take it out of your heart. He said, and then they that were on the rock are they which when they hear receive with joy. And these have no root. They have no root because they don't intend to, to, to do right. They just want to say, oh, the church was good, that the music was good. I'm coming back. But there was no root, so which for a while believed, and in time of temptation, they fall away. That's what Jesus said. These ones, in time of temptation, they fall away. Why are they falling away? Because they don't have a root. They don't have nothing keeping them that's protecting them. Again, they're not guarding their garden. And then and he said, and they which fell among thorns are they which, when they have heard, go forth and are choked with the cares and riches and pleasures of this life and bring no fruit to perfection. Can you imagine? He said they caught up in the cares of the riches, the material things. You know, they still want to do do what they uh, want to do. I'm thinking about that scripture where it says all that's in the world is the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life. And that's what they were caught up in. And Jesus said that's why no fruit could come to perfection. But that on the good ground are they which in an honest and good heart Having heard the word, keep it and bring forth fruit with patience. Meaning that while they're waiting on Jesus, they're praying. While they're waiting on yes. God, they're fasting. While they're waiting on God, they're still attending church. They're still going to church. They're, they're allowing the old things to really become old and the new things to really become new in their life because they have embraced the seed. So they're guarding their garden. They understand sometimes you got to go in there and what's some of the tools that you use for the garden? Y'all, I've never done a garden before in my life. But I know spade, rake. you got to rake it. You got to spade it. Sometimes you got to clean out some of the weeds. Yeah. Sometimes you got to spray it to keep the bugs till out. It. Till it. You got to do all yeah. those type of things. And that's what it takes. You know, we may not be tilling in our hearts but guess what when we pray we're tilling our hearts guess what when we're when we're uh fasting we're raking our hearts glory to yes. god and so we got to be careful we got to tend to ourselves we got to tend to our salvation glory to god Amen. that's why paul said work out your own soul salvation with fear and trembling you got to be attentive to your 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 seed you got to water it hallelujah you got to give it some sunshine praise the lord and so that's why i said the seed does uh manifest itself in time but if you don't take care of it you people don't know they're like who would you grow does it look rotten and all that <laughs> you didn't take care of this you need to go back to school gardening one-on-one -on -one. <laughs> but that's that's just my thing tonight is that really understanding that this is the word of god and that we have to understand how to uh, protect our gardens you know and i know this is just like a metaphor you know yeah. but but it's real you know, and that's what I appreciate yeah. about Jesus because the parables, he gave you something visual to compare it to so you can get an understanding. Praise God. Amen. Every word, every prayer, 
Yes. Every praise. Mm -hmm. Every day spent fasting. Yeah. Every thought when you're turning something over to God. Uh -huh. Every time when you have to cast down an imagination into the obedience of Jesus Christ. All of that is a seed. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And every seed is going to produce after its own kind. Yes. Praise God. We need the seed of faith. Yes, that's it. Yes. To yes. grow and manifest uh -huh. so that it can become something that we can use. Yes. When a man wants to find a wife, uh -huh. he has a seed of faith. When a woman wants to be found by a husband, she has a seed of faith. Mm -hmm. When a married couple is already together in holy matrimony and they're trying to hold it together, mm -hmm. that's a seed of faith. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When you want something good to happen for your children and your grandchildren, uh -huh. that's a seed of faith. Yes. And the way that it's going to manifest itself is we have to exercise our belief in God uh -huh. by allowing his word to have its way. Yeah. The Bible clearly tells us. Ye shall decree a thing, uh -huh. and it shall come to pass. Yes. That's why over in Luke 8, and I think it was verse 13, Luke 8, 13, uh -huh. it basically was saying uh, that they are the rock, are they which? 11, 11, 11, verse 11. Now the parable is this. The, the seed, seed is the is word. The word. Uh -huh. As I said a moment ago, thou shalt decree a thing, and it shall come to pass. Yes. What actually happens when we rely on the word of God uh -huh. and we say things like, I'm healed in Jesus' name, that's the seed of faith uh -huh. being planted down into your spirit. Mm -hmm. When it hits your spirit, you get confidence that God can do anything but fail, which is what it says in Matthew 19 and 26. Mm -hmm. When you know that God can do anything but fail, yes, yes. according to Luke 8 and 11, the, the word of God is the seed. Yes. That seed can only manifest if it is Put forth, yeah. exercise, uh -huh. plant it somewhere in yeah. good ground, the good ground being your heart, uh -huh. not your pumping heart, but the center of your thinking where you put all of your trust and all of your hope in the Lord. Right. Now that it's planted in your heart, uh -huh. guess what it's going to do? It's going to begin to grow. Yeah. It's going to begin to sprout yeah. up. It's going to begin to become something that is not. See, Thank the Jesus. seed does not yet look like what it shall become. Oh, have mercy. Hallelujah. Let me say that again because it sounded so nice. I got to say it twice. The seed does not yet look like what it shall become. Yeah. Yeah, Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. It doesn't look like it. And that's why God gave me this formula for faith. Mm -hmm. Faith is believing in God plus trusting in God with calculated action. Yeah. So when you say yes. I'm healed in Jesus' name, guess what? Uh -huh. I'm already healed. healed. Yes, God. Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm already healed. Yeah. When you're looking for gainful employment. Uh huh. Father, I believe and re I receive my job today in Jesus' name. Yeah. You've already got the job. Yeah. All yeah. you got to do is wait for the physical world mm -hmm. to catch up to the spiritual world. Yeah. You must first receive it in the spirit Come on, before you can receive it in the natural. Uh -huh. Why is it that when somebody wants a house or a car or a husband or a wife or whatever, some new clothes, you think about it first. And when you think about it, that's a that's seed. Yes, that's good. That's when you good. dream about it, that's a seed. seed. Yes. When you write it down on paper, hallelujah, <laughs> that's a seed. Yes. When you speak it out of your mouth uh -huh. and you declare it in the name of Jesus, mm -hmm. it's only because that's a seed. That's a seed. And this is how the seed uh -huh. progresses yes. from its origin uh -huh. into a manifested reality. Yes. Because you, you're exercising your faith by speaking it. Yes. So the Bible says to speak that which be not, be not as though it were. As, as though it were. Yes. Why does it, it even use that terminology? Mm -hmm. Look at the veracity of that, that whole thing. We're not trying to circumvent the process. Right. God is basically putting some velocity on your faith because he's causing you to have enough confidence in him mm -hmm. to speak it. It. Which yes. is why the devil, the spirit of the enemy, uh -huh. wants to close your mouth and keep you from praising God. Come on, Pastor. So that while you're sitting there in the state of darkness and a state of depression or a state of discontentment, mm -hmm. instead of giving God some praise, mm -hmm. instead of honoring God and worshiping the Lord and acknowledging Him in all of our ways, yes. you will sit there quiet uh -huh. like a church mouse. My God, my God. 
It's so quiet you can hear you can hear a rat peeing on cotton if you were in a cotton field. Uh -huh. That's how quiet some people are. That's how quiet some people are. Because that's what the enemy wants you to do. Yeah. When Psalms chapter eight, uh, Psalms number eight, uh -huh. and verse two, I believe it is uh -huh. verse two, says, "My praise uh -huh. still steals the hand of the enemy." Yes. Yes. If your praise steals, stops blocks, intercepts, and shuts down the enemy, uh -huh. that tells you how important it is to open up your mouth Come on, Pastor. and declare and decree that thing. Yes, because when yes. you declare and you decree it, mm -hmm. it shall come to pass. Yeah, that's the word. That's the word. I wish I had a witness that's right the word. there. And that's the seed that you have to make sure that you nurture, you know? Amen. Don't just say it and don't believe it. You got to believe it and you got to keep speaking it. You know, faith without works is dead. Praise that's right. God. That's so right. you have to believe it. And Pastor, there's some notes here that I really appreciate that you said. And when you said what makes a seed grow? Yeah. And I appreciate what you, you put down here because you said in order to grow, every type of seed must endure three things, right? Mm -hmm. And the first thing we said was being planted in dirt, yes. not buried. So you need to know the difference. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> planted means I have a future. Yes. Buried means it's all over. My God. So really understanding the difference of why we plant seeds. We don't bury seeds, but we plant seeds because we, we have a future. We, we just cover it and allow it to start doing what it's supposed to do. So it's covered in darkness, number two. And then number three, the struggle to reach the light. My God, my yeah. God. And so a lot of times that's us right in our walk with Christ. You know, we just want to do things right. We just want to, you know, be whole. We, we want to make sure that our life is well pleasing to God. And so again, we have to guard our garden. We have to cultivate it, praise Amen. God. Amen. And we have to understand that everything is a seed. It's a seed and it starts here sometimes in our mind or in our heart. Glory to God. I think about when a woman becomes impregnated right it's a seed it starts glory to god and, and it begins to grow and grow and we don't know what the baby gonna come out and look like we know it's gonna look like mom or daddy or somebody in the family you know but 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 once that seed manifests itself and it comes to life you have to feed it you have to clothe it you gotta buy stuff hallelujah you gotta have a babysitter you know you have to speak life to this child it's so much that we can compare uh, how to live right or how to walk upright or even how to deal with seeds in our life yes. because we see the different seeds that are planted. Yes. Now, one seed that we always hear about, right, if you have this side, the seed, the size of a mustard yes. seed, you know, the faith, excuse me, the size of a mustard seed. And we know a mustard seed is really, really small, but Jesus was making it so easy and so plain for us. He said, just look at the mustard seed. Yeah. Now, if you can have the faith the size of a mustard seed, speak to those things and watch them be moved. Speak to those things. Don't doubt in your heart, but just believe. But sometimes we doubt because we're looking at it through our eyes instead of li listening with our ears because faith comes by what? Hearing and hearing, hearing by, by the word, word of God. So you got to keep speaking the word of God right. and listening to the word of God. But, uh, Peter started to seek because he took his eyes off of Jesus. You know, he said, he's like, oh no, he, the, the waves were too boisterous. He said, ah, save me, master, save me, yeah. you know. And Jesus is right there. He wasn't going to let him drown. But a lot of times we're, because we are human, we sometimes look at the difficult situation instead of telling our difficult situation, watch God work. Watch God work. Yeah. You know, pastor has a saying, and I know a lot of preachers do. They said that when doubt comes knocking at your door, answer it with what? Faith. faith. But you have to make sure faith, that seed of faith is planted. Mm -hmm. And that's sometimes what we're lacking as Christian. We're lacking that seed of faith. Yes. We need the seed of faith in our hearts. We need to Ooh. believe it. The seed of faith. Praise Lord God. Mercy. Yes. We Glory might be God. playing this Sunday morning. <laughs> Man, this is some good stuff right here. Lord have mercy. Mm -hmm. Let's dive a little deeper. Question number two. Oh, we already talked about these three. I should have put that up while you were saying it. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> that's good, though, because you know. These you know. are the things that make a seed grow. Being planted in dirt, covered in darkness, and the struggle to reach the light. Mm -hmm. That's the beauty of having a seed. I mean, yes, yes. that shows you that a seed, whew, Lord have mercy. <laughs> it's so good. I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself. I mean, that's how I got here. Question number two. <laughs> Where do seeds operate? Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Seeds really operate in dark places. Mm -hmm. Like, like we used to hear the preacher say way back when, 
that God hangs out around trouble. Mm -hmm. Okay. Metaphorically, the seed is hanging out around trouble. Metaphorically, the seed is in a place that looks like darkness. Uh -huh. Metaphorically, the seed is stuck in something where you, 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 you need some help coming up and coming out. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Like if we give energy to a thought, it becomes a word. Mm -hmm. That word is a seed. Yes, if we yes. give energy to the word, then the word becomes an action. Uh -huh. Thoughts begat words, and words begat actions. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Now, these are all seeds. They're going to produce a harvest on its own. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. Uh -huh. Our job is to make sure it goes in the right place. Yes. Let's put some more word on it. Yes. 2 Corinthians 10 and 5 is what keeps a thought from going down the wrong path. It says, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Yes, yes. Somebody catch that tonight. Yes, hallelujah. That clearly says that every thought in your mind did not come from God. Every thought in your mind did not come from the same place. Yes. You've got to watch your ear gates, mm -hmm. your eye gates, mm -hmm. and your mouth. Yes. These are the three portals by which things come in or out. Mm -hmm. So the Bible says it is not that which goeth into a man that defiled him. Uh -huh. It might affect you. Uh -huh. It is that which cometh out. Yes. This defileth the man. Because yes. yes. now you see the more importantly than what you see or what you hear. It's what you say. Yes. Let uh -huh. me say that again. That's good. That's More importantly than what you see or what you hear is what you say. For this mm -hmm. defileth a man. Yes. Somebody yes. needs to catch that tonight. Yes. That's why words are so important. Uh -huh. That's why the seed talked about in Luke chapter 8, verse number 11 is the word. Word. of God. Yes, yes. Lord have mercy. I, You know, Pastor, I love 2 Corinthians 10 and 5 because I remember the season in my life where sometimes it was hard to pray and even now, you know, and you'd be like your mind's rushing and going through your day, going through just things yeah. you need to do and it's just like, Lord, help me just to you know, bring every thought, you know, to the captivity of Christ, you know, to the obedience of Christ. Help me, Lord, to bring my thoughts in, you know, that I may just worship you and forget about the cares. And so, and that's something else. Again, when we're planting seeds or like pastors say, when it's in you, again, you have to cultivate it. You have to guard it and you have to push, you know, like they say, pray until something happens, that's right? Pray, praise God until something happens, however you want to say it. Yeah. But we have to push out, you know those the, the cares of this world because if not it'll choke us it'll, 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 it'll hinder us from yeah. getting to our destination basically from growing right because when we plant seeds we got to watch it grow we want to see That's things right. grow and if we're not careful we'll become stagnated and then you what you have is a bunch of disability saints walking around because they're not growing in God mm. because they've been stagnated Lord, and we don't want mercy. that we don't want to keep producing disabilities and in, in the church, praise God. But we want to produce people that are growing. Our bishop used to always say, we must grow so others can grow. That's right. Amen. But if we're not growing, then who's going to grow behind us? Amen. And so that's why it's important to cultivate your seed. It's important to know who you are in God. It's important to know that you you study to show yourself approved because the workman need not to be ashamed, rightly dividing right. the, the word, word of truth. truth right. Amen. And so we have to look at ourselves as seeds and we have to look at ourselves that you know we got to protect what god has put in us glory right. to god right. god has saved us he has sanctified us what you gonna do with it now now that you are a christian what you gonna do where do i go from here and a lot of times uh, people don't know where they go from here after they accepted jesus as their personal savior and so here we have the blessed uh the blueprint to a blessed life, something that every believer needs. When we get a new convert that comes to church, we open up this, we give this to them so they know where to start That's because right. it's more than just saying thank you, Jesus, and hallelujah, but we have to live a life. You know, holiness is a lifestyle. Being saved is a lifestyle. And so we have to understand it comes back to the seeds. You know, how are you sowing? How are you sowing? What are you producing in the kingdom of God to make sure you are growing? Yes, 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 yes. Whew. There's three primary types of seeds. You have physical, you have financial, and you have uh, spiritual. In this physical realm, 
when we're talking about seeds. Who's that? That's the speaker speaker making okay. a weird noise. I was like, cast that demon out of here right now. Jesus, <laughs> In the physical realm, you're talking about good seeds or deeds or practices that can yield excellent health. Yes. I mean, there's so many different types of seeds here. So you got to get your mind up and out of that. Oh, that's a net. Lord, have mercy. <laughs> I bind distractions in the name of Jesus. <laughs> uh, look at this, though. Um, here we go with this whole thing. Some people are probably just thinking financial. Mm -hmm. Some people are thinking physical. Yeah. Somebody's just probably thinking spiritual. Uh -huh. You've got a microcosm of all of these seeds. And there's so many things that you need to be thinking think about. When, when you go to the financial realm, you, now you're talking about investing, purchases, uh -huh. or savings. You know, you, you're thinking about having good relationships on your job, or if you're a business owner, having good relationships with other business owners, right. as well as stakeholders. Uh -huh. And then if you're talking about the spiritual realm, this is a whole other level of seeds we're talking about. Amen. 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 Seeds like. Uh, uh, Worshiping the Lord, uh -huh. praising the Lord, uh -huh. fasting, yes. uh, uh, prayer, uh -huh. reading the word, reading the word, uh -huh. fulfillment, you know, yeah. fulfillment. Uh -huh. yielding yourself to God yes. so that you can be used. Uh -huh. That's how you get that stuff called, uh, where is it, uh, Galatians 5 and 22, I think, 23, yeah. 23, the, fruit 23 the, the fruit of the spirit. Uh -huh. All of that stuff begins to show up, joy. You know, gentleness, self-control, all, all of the things that you're looking for, faithfulness. Yes. Yes. You know, I, I mean, you've got to learn how to work this thing. Woo! Amen. That's it. That's key. And, and, and then you got to give God something to work with. Yes. And, and that's yes. how you really make this work for yourself. Yeah. Everything Hallelujah. you do or say is a seed. Everything you you speak is a seed. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you look over in Job 22 and 28, mm -hmm. it says, that I said this a few moments ago. But I didn't quote the scripture. I'll tell you where it was from. Job 22 and 28 says, Thou shalt also decree a thing, and it shall be established unto thee, and the light shall shine upon thy ways. Yes. What in the world does that mean? <laughs> I mean, just think about that. Uh -huh. And then there may be someone else out there who thinks this has been a blessing for me and I want to be a blessing to you all. We want to encourage you to give to this ministry. This is good ground. Amen. Amen. And, and God has been, he's been blessing us through people. Yes. The reason we do what we do, the way that we do it is because we have people who are giving to this ministry, yes. people who are obeying God. Uh -huh. And see, you can't be God given and whatever you do for the kingdom, uh -huh. God will always mm -hmm. do for you. Yeah. We thank all of you for joining us tonight. God bless you. God keep you. May the spirit and the, the grace of God rest rule and abide in your heart so that you can walk in victory all week long. And until we yeah. see you again, yeah. may the Lord bless you real good. Yeah. God bless, God you, bless you. God bless you and God keep you. Yeah. And just know that we love you. Yes. Good Amen. Job. Good job.